Welcome to the next lecture of Unit 2. In this lecture, we will study about the properties of variance and the moments of the random variable. So, moments is already we have seen two moments that is mean and variance of the random variable. Then we will see here how to calculate the remaining moments of random variable. Let us start with the properties of variance. So, coming to the properties of variance, so we already know the definition of variance which is expectation of x minus mu whole square that is for a random variable x. If suppose let us assume that there are two random variables x and y and three constants a, b and c. So with that see these, these properties are uh, very normal and you can prove them as and when needed. Coming to the variance of x, what is the range of variance of x? That means what is upper bound, what is upper bound and what is the lower bound of the variance of x. So always variance is greater than 0. I already told you variance of x is always a positive value. So variance of x is greater than or equal to 0 because the deviation is always greater than or equal to it is a positive constant and it is less than e of x square. e of x square always represents the mean square value. So mean square value or the RMS value is nothing but e of x square. So if you take expectation, uh, if you calculate the expectation e of x square of a signal. So what do you get? e of x square will give, give you the RMS value that means it gives you the average power consumed or average power of the signal that is uh, the uh, e of x square. So the variance of x is always less than uh, less than the mean square value and it is greater than 0 that is the first property. And coming to the second property where see and one more thing variance of x is nothing but e of x minus mu whole square. So whenever I write variance of any constant into x, you have to replace the x in uh, and you have to write cx. So variance of cx is equal to expectation of cx minus mu whole square. So cx minus mu whole square, if you do the abbreviation of cx minus mu whole square, then uh, you would know here. So uh, expectation of cx minus mu whole square will give you x square plus mu square expectation of expectation of x c square x square plus mu square minus 2 c x into mu so that the term minus when you apply expectation to the individual terms you will be left with c square variance of x so you can solve that why because uh, you will see that some some terms will be cancelled similarly variance of x so when you do the actual abbreviation of variance of x it is nothing but e of x minus mu whole square can be written as e of x square minus e of x mu square uh, e of x is nothing but the mean mu whole square this is only mean square value minus mean whole square will give you variance so if you know the mean then you can calculate the variance similarly variance of ax plus by. so if you extend this definition with two terms then it will result to a square variance of x, 2ab covariance of x comma y plus b square variance of y. So what is covariance? See covariance uh, we deal with in the next unit and uh, but meanwhile covariance of x comma y the definition deals with the variance between x and y which is nothing but summation of expectation of x minus mu into y minus mu divided by n that gives you the covariance of uh, x and y and coming to variance of x plus y so variance of x plus y can be written as variance of x plus variance of y if x and y are independent so if there is no correlation between the two random variables x and y are independent that means there is, there is nothing common between x and y uh, then variance of x comma y can be written as individual sum variance of x plus variance of x like that using one terminology one definition of variance and the upper bound you can uh, derive any number of uh, statistical uh, mathematical notations applied uh, when variance is applied and coming to the moments so uh, in the moments we uh, there are different types of moments also um, if you want to calculate the number of uh, 
the nth moment so you can represent it as mn or mu n okay so mn is expectation of x power m which is equal to minus infinity to infinity x bar n f of x dx you just remember the mean of the random variable for a continuous uh, random variable m is nothing but expectation of x which is minus infinity to infinity x times f of x dx that is a mean okay whereas when you want to calculate the nth order moment mn so nth order moment can be x bar n so if suppose i want m3 third order moment or i want the m4 fourth order moment just substitute n is equal to 4 so expectation of x bar 4 is equal to integral of minus infinity x bar 4 f of x dx so that is the fourth order moment and uh, uh, if suppose uh, just take n is equal to 1 when n is equal to 1 it is expectation of x so it is same as mean and uh, coming to m2 it is e of x square x square f of x dx what does it mean it is nothing but mean square value similarly m3 e of x cube so find using moments so you you see that the density function changes with the mean mean and then uh, m0 if you calculate m0 it is just e of 1 which is a constant so expectation of uh, 1 is always 1 so uh, like that you can calculate any uh, order moment similarly central moments coming to the central moments you are comparing it with the mean so that means me uh, if you take x power n it is only moment Whereas if you take x minus p whole power n, it is central moment. So how, how your nth order moment is varying with respect to mean. So that is the significance of general moments and central moments. So coming to uh, coming to the significance. Coming to the significance of uh, moments there is another uh, term called as skewness when n is equal to 3 so skewness defines how much a distribution is shifted in a certain direction so skew is actually denoted by expectation of x minus mu by sigma whole cube so cube third order moment but central one but divided by sigma this is actually called as x minus mu by sigma if you don't apply 3 if it is x expectation of x minus mu by sigma that is actually called as z score the z score so for the z score if you apply uh, n is equal to 3 it is actually called as skewness okay so uh, you can uh, see the distribution density function if you see the dis uh, density function graphical representation then you'll understand the skewness see see this is when there is no skew skewness is equal to 0 this is the general norm Gaussian random variable function with its mean is equal to 0 so it doesn't mean skewness is equal to 0 but when this is its mean is equal to 0 and if you have a skew a positive skew or a negative skew your uh, tail of the distribution will vary it is shifted either towards right or either towards left based on the skewness so let me extend the extend with another example of skewness see when standard deviation is one that means sigma is equal to one you yeah i didn't here i didn't give here the mean value so when sigma uh, standard deviation is one that means from the mean how much it is varying but when skewness is 6.2 what happens to the tail of the distribution it is extending towards right similarly when you uh, decrease standard deviation point five, you can see that the deviation skewness is equal to 1.8 so not to not this much you can see this is another example and uh, skew towards the right and when standard deviation is 1.5 so when you are increasing the standard deviation from 0.5 to see previously we have seen 1.5 and if it is 1.5 then what happens to the spread of the uh, distribution you can see actually this is this type of distribution is called as log normal distribution when so what happens is the skewness will all the way go towards um, right 
and skewness is equal to 33.5 and coming to the beta distribution so a distribution like uh, beta having some uh, in beta distribution you have two parameters one is alpha and beta when alpha is 100 and beta is equal to 2 and uh, you can see the skewness is towards the left that means definitely it is negative skew so negative skew indicating that it is skewed towards the left positive skew is skewed towards the right and negative skew is skewed towards the left and coming to kurtosis so now we have seen when n is equal to 3 uh, if you apply that x minus mu whole by sig sigma whole cube is nothing but skewness coming to the kurtosis it is x minus mu by uh, you have your variance sigma that means x minus mu by sigma whole power 4 is actually called as kurtosis so what is it that means when you in, see if you increase the n value each uh, n will give you some statistical analysis of your uh, function of your density function so now if kurtosis, kurtosis when you take n is equal to 4 that order moment fourth order moment will always tell you about how pointy a distribution is pointy what does it mean you can see the peak of the uh, distribution the peak varies so this is uniform distribution whereas uh, if you take uh, kurtosis of dis different distributions if you see the black one is normal distribution so this is a gaussian distribution having an at mean but uh, when you go for logistic what is happening here it the distribution is more pointy so it is becoming narrow the spread is actually becoming very narrow so this is kurtosis of random variable so like that you can see that every order movement will have a statistical impact and it will increase the analyzing power of your data thank you